Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So, the Ryzen 7000 CPU reviews are in from multiple different publications and obviously, personally, I would also like to review them, but the channel is not at that stage to be able to get, you know, review units from manufacturers. But yeah, so let's take a look at all the reviews and analyze what's going on with Ryzen 7000, what has changed, what has improved and what has gone down. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Now I know my audience is more into portable technology like laptops and you know laptop APUs and all those things, but it is still quite important to know about the characteristics of Ryzen 7000 because you have to set your expectations based on you know performance and temperatures and power draw and all those things when it comes to the laptops. You know, it's basically the same CPUs in a laptop form factor and power limited lap laptop form factor. So you have to know the characteristics of Ryzen 7000 before you you know set expectations for Ryzen 7000 laptops. Yeah, we will start with power consumption because obviously guys, we know that uh, performance will be much better than Ryzen 5000. It's Ryzen 5000 is like one, one and a half years old. So obviously uh, Ryzen 7000 will be a massive improvement in, in terms of performance. But but if you've been paying attention to the different publications, uh, you have probably realized that the power draw has increased quite a lot. Yes, but before everybody freaks out, here's a, a screenshot from the tests done by PC World using Ryzen's Eco mode. So power draw is not really out of whack, guys. It is still much more efficient than Intel. We'll come back to this uh, screenshot in a in a moment. But let's talk about how Ryzen 7000, uh, you know, uh, controls its clock speeds and power draw. So one thing that has changed is AMD's uh, power target, or let's say AMD's way of achieving great performance. So. If you go back a few years and look at Ryzen 3000, Ryzen 5000, they are highly efficient. Ryzen 5000, in fact, is one of the most efficient desktop x86 processors around. Ryzen 5000 really had the performance per watt on lock. Uh, no matter how much Intel pulled ahead, they did at much, much higher power draw. And obviously, guys, all the publications were focusing on Intel 12th gen Alder Lake's you know, performance. Like in the higher end desktop parts, the performance was so much better that obviously all the eyes were glued into the performance that most of the people forgot about efficiency. People failed to realize that Ryzen 5000 is so much efficient that, that now when Ryzen 7000 has come out and people have seen its power targets, have realized that Ryzen 5000, how efficient it was. But all is not doom and gloom. Let's analyze how Ryzen 7000 uh, you know, controls its power draw and power target. So in Ryzen 7000, what AMD has done is they have actually used temperature as the metric or the threshold for power draw. So here's a simple example. Let's say you have a Ryzen 7950X processor on two systems. On one system, you have a big 360 millimeter AIO and on the other hand, you have a 120 millimeter AIO. So a much smaller all-in-one liquid cooler. What will happen is that if you use an application like Cinebench or Blender, which can take advantage of all the cores and threads and you know load up all the cores and threads to 100% to get the maximum power performance, in both situations, the Ryzen 7950X will be locked at 95 degrees centigrade. Yes. Even if the 360mm AIO has much more better cooling capacity than the 120mm AIO, both will be pinged at 95 degrees centigrade. What will change is that the power draw with the 360mm AIO will be higher and the 360mm AIO will also enable the Ryzen 7950X to achieve much higher clock speeds. So AMD is using the extra headroom of the 360mm AIO, the extra thermal headroom of the 360mm AIO to raise its power even further and also raise the clock speeds. So both will be at 95 degrees centigrade, but the 360mm AIO will have higher clock speeds and higher uh, power draw compared to the 120mm AIO. So temperature is 95 degrees centigrade. That's the expectation that you have to keep in mind, even with desktop processors now. So depending upon the cooling solution that you put in your system, the power draw and clock speeds will be highly different. They will be like highly dependent on your cooling solution. So when you're going to purchase a high-end Ryzen 7000 desktop and likewise a high-end Ryzen 7000 laptop, you have to keep in mind the cooling capacity like more than ever because the performance and uh, power draw is directly linked to that cooling capacity that thermal headroom of the uh, you know coolers and heat sinks that you are using so this is what ryzen 7000 has changed ryzen 7000 is also now chasing after the maximum performance like this is the stock behavior guys this is the stock behavior i'm not talking about overlocking or anything this is how ryzen 7000 will come out of the box when you put it in a motherboard this is how it will perform it will try to utilize all the thermal headroom to reach the maximum temperature and that will control the power draw and the clock speeds. So this is how the stock behavior is like. Obviously now out of the box, Ryzen 7000 is not as efficient as Ryzen 5000, not even close, but it is what it is. However, the saving grace, as I told you, was eco mode. 
Ryzen 7000 has actually got substantially better IPC performance compared to Ryzen 5000. And so if you see the eco mode comparison done by uh, PC World, there hasn't been many testing done on eco mode, which will be very important uh, for the Ryzen 7000 desktop parts, the higher end parts. It will be very important to see that. And we are all waiting for uh, those eco mode comparisons because those eco mode performance is what you are going to expect on laptops uh, because a laptops, you know, the power uh, is much more constrained. There is not much headroom compared uh, to desktops. So the eco mode numbers are very important to set expectations for Ryzen 7000 laptop APUs. So if you look at this uh, benchmark done by PC World, you'll see that Ryzen 7000, Ryzen 7950X when locked at just 65 watts, guys, just 65 watts is actually faster than a i9 12900K drawing over 250 watts of power. Yes, a Ryzen 9 7950X at 65 watts is faster than a Core i9 12900K fully unlocked drawing as much power as possible as high as 270 watts. Not only that, the Ryzen 9 7950X at 65 watts is also faster than the Ryzen 9 5950X drawing as much as possible like above 105 watts obviously I think around 140 watts or so. So you can see the Ryzen 9 7950X is it's not that it is not inefficient it's it's just that Ryzen's out of the box stock like boost behavior for Ryzen 7000 has made it to draw as much power as possible. So that's where it has changed. So if you are in eco mode, you can see the Ryzen 9 7950X is actually quite efficient when compared to Intel and also more efficient than Ryzen 9 5950X. But obviously the maximum performance when you pull it to the maximum performance, it's there when the Ryzen 9 7950X performance per watt, uh, you know, drops compared to the 5950X. Even if you lock the 7950X to 105 watt TDP, which is like the TDP of uh, the 5950X, you can see that the 7950X is outperforming the 5950X by 25%. And obviously it is also outperforming the Intel Core i9 12900K. So again, what I want to emphasize is that Ryzen 7000 is not like inefficient in absolute terms, but it's just that for most people out of the box, this is the stock behavior. It will draw as much power as possible until it reaches 95 degrees centigrade, where it will stay there in you know core heavy workloads where you can take advantage of all the cores and the threads. Obviously, guys, when you're playing games, this is not going to be the situation. Uh, Linus Eclipse has shown that in games, the uh, thermals are just fine uh, relative to the performance that you get. Obviously, in terms of gaming performance as well, you got a very good uplift. So, uh, yeah, it's not all doom and gloom, but you have to be aware of the default boost behavior of Ryzen uh, 7000 and you have to invest in a good cooler. Everybody knows that guys, these are super high end processors, these are top of the line processors. So these demand high end coolers. Now, if we move on to performance and obviously for performance, uh, Ryzen 7000 is absolute kick ass. Uh, for uh, if you compare the 7950X to the Ryzen 9 5950X, there is substantial improvement in terms of uh, productivity performance. Like on average, there is like a 35, 45% average boost across all the benchmarks. Uh, you can check out the benchmarks from Linus Tech Tips, from Hardware Unbox or from Gamers Nexus and all the other uh, vendors and publications. So in terms of performance, there is no doubt in productivity performance, all the Ryzen 7000 parts are much better than the previous generation Ryzen 5000 parts in terms of productivity benchmarks. Not only in multi core performance, but also in single core performance. There has been huge jumps. In gaming performance, the upgrade has been lesser because obviously Ryzen 5000 is still quite good for gaming. And these days, most games are getting GPU limited. So for gaming, the upgrade is not that much. Uh, I mean, still it's like, you know, 15% on average about, about or so. So, um, yeah, in terms of uh, gaming performance at 1080p with super high-end GPUs where you're trying to show the improvement of the CPU using CPU limited scenes, then the Ryzen 7000 is actually slightly above average improved, like 15% average uh, improvement over Ryzen 7000, which is actually good gen on gen average improvement, but strictly for gaming, it's really not worth it to upgrade. You can actually get a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and that will perform except exceptionally well for gaming you don't have to worry and you don't have to upgrade to ryzen 7000 with all the new motherboard the new ram and all that and increasing the cost so it is what it is uh, gaming performance is also improved but not as high as productivity which was expected now let's come to the worrying parts of ryzen 7000 where ryzen 7000 is not looking as good as it should so obviously with the ryzen 9 parts 7950x and the 7900x these two are like obviously amazing parts they also provide good value for money when compared to intel order lake even now however when it comes to the lower end parts like the ryzen 5 and the ryzen 7 that's where intel order lake and intel upcoming intel uh, 13 gen raptor lake is going to 
pull ahead for sure because they are not only going to they are, they already have more thread counts than um, a Ryzen 5 a Ryzen 7000 and they are going to increase the thread count by increasing the efficiency cores of Intel 13th gen uh, Raptor Lake when when they come out next month I think so so obviously uh, that's where Ryzen is kind of struggling uh, they don't have as many cores and threads for like uh, as much as Intel uh, so the flip the script has flipped like la, the previous generation you know if you go a couple of years back Ryzen was the one who used to have more cores and threads versus Intel but now Intel is having more cores and threads than Ryzen and that's where you know the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 parts are going to uh, sit in a slightly uncomfortable position when compared to Intel 12th gen and 13th gen especially 12th gen which has advantage of DDR4 cheaper DDR4 RAM and also cheaper motherboards so uh, we're, go we're going to have to see what how Intel prices uh, Intel Raptor Lake uh, to understand whether Ryzen 7000 will go is going to be a value for money part or not especially the lower end Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 parts it's actually kind of sad guys that AMD actually made their uh, you know uh, road to fame uh, you know based on the Ryzen 5 parts the Ryzen 5 1600 the Ryzen 5 2600 the Ryzen 5 3600 these were such trailblazing CPUs at the you know lower end of the market providing with six cores 12 threads you know and great productivity performance uh, yeah seems like AMD has you know kind of abandoned that uh, ideology it just shows that uh, nobody is your friend guys AMD is not your friend Nvidia is not your friend Radeon is not your friend and Intel is definitely not your friend so nobody is a friend guys these are all corporations trying to maximize their profits and uh, yeah you cannot expect to be expect them to be absolutely consumer friendly at this point of time especially that AMD is now the market leader so you can see guys these are the real faces so that aside, uh, the other uh, con of Ryzen 7000 at this point of time are the motherboards. There is only you know X670 motherboards available, X670e and X670 uh, normal one, uh, and these are crazy expensive. Uh, what we are hearing from the you know uh, the Western outlets, the Western publications, they are saying that uh, you know the motherboard prices are starting at three hundred dollars. So that's insanely expensive for something like a Ryzen 5 7600X. Now AMD has said that they're going to come out with B-series motherboard starting at $125, uh, but that has not come out yet. So we're going to have to see if those motherboards are actually worth it or not, or they're like just trash motherboards. So that also depends. And also, you know, DDR5 RAM. Now DDR, DDR5 RAM has gone down in price over the last one year. So that is fine. That is fine, guys. Uh, but yeah, the motherboard cost. But one, again, one positive thing about uh, Ryzen 7000 versus Ryzen uh, versus Intel uh, 13 gen is going to be that uh, Ryzen 7000, you know, the AM5 platform is going to be supported for at least three generations after this Ryzen 7000. So that is a big advantage for uh, uh, the AM5 platform. Let's say you buy a good quality motherboard now and you can definitely go for like Zen 6. You know, when Zen 6 comes out, you can, you know, uh, use that same motherboard and upgrade to a high-end processor from Zen 6. So that is definitely one advantage of the AM5 platform just like they had the advantage with AM4 platform and Intel 13th gen will be the last uh, uh, you know um, processors for the current you know platform that they are using. Uh, going forward with uh, 14th generation with Meteor Lake they're going to have new motherboards coming in so uh, that's where the advantage of AM5 platform lies so that's it for this video guys uh, Ryzen 7 we are all waiting for Ryzen 7000 laptop APUs because a lot of people are going to upgrade to Ryzen 7000 guys I am going to upgrade uh, I'm, I st I'm, I'm still running Intel Coffee Lake laptop and GTX 10 GTI so we are all waiting uh, you know patiently for Ryzen 7000 laptop APUs the performance claims are going are pretty insane right off the bat like the rumors are claiming Ryzen 9 950X level of performance in laptop chassis so uh, <laughs> that's going to be amazing so let's see what the future holds for us and yeah if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to the channel let's reach 7000 subscribers as soon as possible uh, take care and I'll catch you in the next one peace